Hi everyone, Grover Neville from Headphones.com here, and today we're going to be talking about the RME ADI-2 DAC FS. A lot of people have been asking me questions about this unit, especially as it compares to the Fondator 1D, which I recently reviewed, as well as how it compares to other DAC amp combos in the price range. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to say is that I'm very familiar with the Army ADI family of products. I use a Fireface 2 as the core of my studio. I've used ADI 8s, I've used ADI 2s. I've also used the Babyface Pro. Lots of Army gear has passed through my studio and gets used currently as um, stuff that I record with. So I'm fairly familiar with the product lineup from Army. This, however, is an interesting unit in that it is firmly a consumer facing unit rather than a pro facing unit. One of the most interesting things about this is that they have uh, essentially tried to retain the flexibility of the pro audio units while taking some of that to a little bit more of an understandable and uh, hi-fi friendly space. So rather than having all of the microphone inputs, all of the extra functionality that's specific to the Total Mix mixer software and all that kind of stuff, Army has instead opted to create a unit which is specifically hi-fi functional. This means that we get a full suite of inputs and outputs. We've got XLR and RCA outputs on the back. The XLRs are 200 ohm and the RCAs are 100 ohm output impedance, so pretty standard. Um, we also get a full suite of digital connectivity, so USB, coax, and optical inputs. The DC input on the back is quite interesting. RME mentions in the excellent and very thorough manual that you can use a battery pack as well as any DC 18 to 15 volts power supply. So that makes the unit very portable as well as um, quite flexible. Over over on the front panel, you can see that we've got our full-size headphone and IEM inputs. The IEM is just a 3.5 millimeter uh, output with a slightly different power delivery. Um, over here, we've got volume, input, EQ, and setup. And then we've got our two multifunction knobs. So when you're going through the RME's menu system, you're gonna find the volume selector is mostly a monitoring tool that lets you switch between the different outputs as well as monitor your volume, which is controlled by the large knob on the front. Then as you go down to IO, that's where most of your interesting settings live. So things like the filter slopes, things like crossfeed, all of that good stuff lives in the IO section. Uh, then you have EQ, which is a five band digital EQ. It works all the way up to 768 kilohertz. Army's basically got a reputation for having a very powerful onboard DSP EQ. I found that to be true with this one. Um, it's an excellent, transparent, and really flexible parametric EQ. You've got Q controls, you've got frequency controls, you've got gain, um, and it's actually one of the best onboard DSP uh, systems that I've ever seen in a DAC amp combo for hi-fi. Down at the bottom is setup. This deals mostly with some extra settings regarding DSD, uh, as well as setup regarding the auto dark features uh, on the screen, um, the color of the meters, all that kind of aesthetic stuff. The other thing that's kind of cool about this unit and that I actually really appreciated when I was reviewing it is that you can set it to mute the line outputs or mute the headphone outputs when you plug in one or the other. So you can adjust the functionality of what's playing and, and when uh, with this unit in a way that's not possible with a lot of others. So it gives you routing functionality, which I really, really appreciate. People who use, for example, a subwoofer uh, output with their headphones are really going to like the functionality of this unit because it means you can plug in a headphone and mute the outputs or unmute the outputs, right? You can have the outputs run actively and run a subwoofer or run a second amplifier uh, if you wanted to run multiple headphones for whatever reason uh, and volume match them because you can control the volume separately from the headphone output and the line out. So they're all completely adjustable. There's also, if you're not into super complex EQ setups, a really simple treble and bass control uh, that controls broad bass and treble uh, output from the unit. Uh, it's got adjustable level, which I think is really, really important and useful on a DAC. It means that you can pair directly with things like sensitive tube amplifiers or uh, solid state amplifiers that might have uh, particularly high or low uh, input impedances. Uh, and that's another really, really useful piece of functionality from this gear. Overall, I would say that from a functionality standpoint, I actually can't think of too many units that are in the hi-fi realm that do as many things as the Army does. Uh, it, it's really, it's hard to fault here. This is, this is a great unit if you need something which is flexible, which you're never going to have to worry about uh, any of the I.O. or setup being uh, not to your liking. For example, you know, if you run studio monitors or if you run a secondary headphone amp, not just using the headphone out of this, this is going to be an incredibly flexible and useful unit. That makes a great case from my perspective for this being your one and only uh, headphone DAC amp desktop unit. Um, just because it can do all that stuff, it can EQ, it has crossfeed built in, uh, and because it is so 
uh, flexible in all those ways. Now let's get down to the nitty and gritty of it, which is how does it sound? The Army ADI-2 to me sounds largely like a much more detailed version of many AKM DACs. It's actually a lot more detailed in the high end than I was expecting from an AKM DAC. Usually I think of these as being smooth. I think of them as having a nice detail, but not excessive detail. It's definitely a smoother presentation, a warmer, maybe slightly punchier presentation. Now, with the RME ADI-2, I found that that wasn't actually the case. I did get a nice smooth presentation. I never had harshness, but the three-dimensionality was actually better than I expected, and the level of treble detail was much better than I expected. I've currently got a Matrix X-Saber Pro in for uh, review right now, and I was able to compare the two. That's kind of a flagship implementation of the ESS9038 Pro chip, and this is a flagship implementation of the AKM4493 chip. And what I noticed between the two is that while the ESS chip definitely has that high-end, sort of really incisive, sparkly sense of detail, the RME wasn't as far behind it as you might expect, given the reputation of the velvet sound of the AKM chips. It was actually pretty detailed, though I did find the transients to be a little smoother on the RME than on the x Pro. I also found the mid-range to have a sort of openness, and the bass had a sort of roundness that definitely did remind me that it's an AKM DAC but it didn't get in the way of it being very precise, having great imaging, and having a really nice sense of soundstage. Now, personally, I do like R2R DACs. They are my favorite kind of DACs, so I do find something like a Gunier or Bifrost 2 or some other, you know, kind of warmer sounding R2R DAC for my tastes is a bit preferable. So that's where the built-in filters of the RME ADI-2 come in. And you can switch between all of them. They basically have uh, the same set of filters that you'll find on most of these kinds of DACs. You'll find fast roll off, slow roll off. You'll find uh, linear phase, minimum phase, all that kind of stuff. There's also an NOS filter, or at least ARMY calls it an NOS filter. In the manual, they specify that it's actually a very slow roll off filter, not necessarily a true filterless design. So the thing that's kind of cool about that is that it definitely rolls the treble off a bit more. It's got a warmer, sort of meatier sound. It's a bit more colored, um, but I do find it pleasurable. Uh, when listening to speakers especially. Uh, and if with headphones, if I had a headphone that had too much energy at 5K or too much energy at eight, this was something that I did find I kind of enjoyed. Generally, I would use the EQ features to achieve these sort of like sonic tweaks, but you do have the filters here and they do change the sound, though I have to emphasize that the changes in sound are really pretty minor. You're gonna get slight tonal balance changes in the very high treble from the roll off of the filter, but it's not gonna be that much. What you're really gonna hear is a slight difference in the way that the transients are presented and in the way that the treble information is presented. And in that sense, right out of the box on the default filter, the army sounds excellent and is extremely detailed. I think there's gonna be a lot of people who actually really like this as a nice balance between not too bright, like the reputation of some of the Sabre chips has traditionally been, uh, and, and not too smooth and warm, like some of the uh, less expensive implementations of the AKM chips have been. For example, with the Fonitor 1D, when I compared the two, I did find that the Fonitor for me had a bit less detail. It was a bit smoothed over sounding, and it just lacked the level of refinement that I felt was coming out of the Army ADI-2. I really felt that the uh, that the RME had a level of performance which I would have associated with really top-end flagship DACs. This was something that I I could live with this DAC and not really want another DAC. Um, or even need another DAC just because of all the functionality built in and the fact that the sound quality is that excellent. Now, if I were looking for something that was higher end than this, then I might be looking at custom, you know, R2R implementations or a core DAC or something like that. But I didn't really feel the need to go any higher than this. This, to me, in a sense, felt like endgame territory from a DAC. So I think that the DAC stage is not going to disappoint in this unit. It's really, really good. Um, again, I'd like to emphasize that that's in light of how different DAC stages do sound. This is if you're being picky, right? Once you get to this kind of level, a lot of the DAC stages will sound very, very similar. And what you're hearing is going to be more the differences in the output topology for the DAC circuit than in the DAC chips themselves. Now, that said, let's move on to the headphone amplifier. So RME has kind of an interesting take on the headphone outputs. So obviously the RME ADI-2 is much better equipped in that it has an IEM output specifically. 
And I think that that's really helpful. Uh, also, I should note that it's a 0.1 ohm impedance according to the specifications on ARMY's website. And ARMY does tend to have very strict specifications. Generally, I find their units match what they say on the website very closely. I would encourage you to read the manual from RME about exactly what they've done to the IEM output as they have a really thorough and detailed manual. But suffice to say that they have taken a great deal of care to make this a very quiet amplifier. I tried it with a variety of IEMs that were quite sensitive, uh, something like the Campfire Andromeda, something like the Rye Penta. They seem to be pretty quiet to my ears on this amplifier. So I can say with uh, you know a fair degree of confidence that I think this will work better for you than a Fonder 1D or something else that maybe has a much more powerful but much noisier gain stage. So the Army ADI-2 DAC for me definitely does work well with IEMs. Is it my first choice? I don't necessarily know about that as I do think something portable might be even better, but it is low noise and it will work with IEMs. Next, we come to the headphone output. Now, this has been the source of a little bit of controversy in some of the forums. People have said, well, I feel that the Army ADI-2 DAC has a little bit of a dynamically constrained sound to the headphone output. Um, and I was curious to see if this was the case. So when plugging in low impedance headphones, which again, Army has great info on their manual about how they've tuned this. And they do mention at one point in the manual that the headphone output on this unit actually is somewhat current limited. Now it was an intentional design choice from what I understand from the manual, but there is kind of a lack of drive for some of the headphones in my stable. I actually found that the headphone output on this unit worked best when I was using it with higher sensitivity dynamic drivers with a slightly higher impedance than it did with lower impedance planar magnetic headphones, which do tend to like a lot of current because they have a generally purely resistive impedance curve. Army does specify this headphone out on the high power setting as putting out one and a half watts at 32 ohms. Now, that's a fair degree of power, but not as much as some headphone amplifiers. What I will say is that generally, I don't find that it has the problem I typically associate with lack of power. It, it sounds large, the bass is tight, there's a sense of scale and impact to things, but what it feels like is that with my Odyssey headphones or with the Dan Clark Ether 2 headphones, for example, it's kind of 2D and the frequency extremes seem to be a little bit harsh sounding. Now, what I mean by that is not in the sense that they are too aggressive or too forward because of any sort of tuning aberration, but just that they seem to be working hard. I just get the sense that the amplifier is working a little bit harder than it would like to at very high and very low frequencies. And this is something which is unfortunate because generally I think that the headphone output on this unit sounds quite good. Is it as good as the Fonditor 1 as just an amplifier? I don't think so, but it does offer a lot more power and it certainly drove my planar magnetic headphones, for example, to uh, a higher degree of dynamic slam than the Fonditor 1 did. Now, I think you can do better for the price point. So if you're looking at this as a DAC and amp combo and you have something like an inefficient LCD headphone or you have something like a Dan Clark Ether 2, I can really recommend this as a DAC, but I don't think it would be my first choice as a headphone amplifier unless you were specifically looking for an all-in-one and you only wanted the feature set that came with the all-in-one you don't mind the headphone amplifier sounding maybe not flagship quality. One of the things that did alleviate this was that I could change the filters and I could change the equalization curves on the unit. So if I was feeling like there was too much treble, I could always turn the treble control down or I could adjust the parametric EQ. Now, that solved some of the problems and it did maybe help smooth things out in the treble by turning it down or turning the bass up, but I still always got the feeling with my planar magnetic headphones that this just wasn't driving them as well as I could given the price point. So to me, there's a little bit of lost value on that end of the equation. Now, I will say that for IEMs or for sensitive headphones, I had no problem with the headphone amplifier on this. If you're looking for a clean, solid state, dynamic headphone amplifier, I really can't think of too many all-in-one units that do it as good as this or better. In fact, I don't know if I can think of any solid state units that do it better while having the quality of DAC and the feature set that this unit has. I'd also like to point out that I am nitpicking a little bit because this is an expensive unit and I do expect it to perform at a very high level for $12.99. Now, if you're pairing this with a separate amplifier, then your choices are limitless and you're likely gonna be able to find something which fits specifically with your headphones much better. That said, if you are looking for a desktop on one unit, I think the ability to use the equalization, the crossfeed, and all the other features of this unit kind of trumps the 
maybe not quite flagship quality of the headphone amplifier. Being able to add bass in the order of 6 dB or being able to take treble down in very narrow bands or in very broad bands to me is gonna affect the sound of your headphone in much, much greater detail than a different headphone amplifier will do. Now you still wanna have a good headphone amplifier obviously and like I said, this is not my first choice for a planar magnetic headphone that has a relatively low sensitivity. However, I still got good sound out of my LCD Xs or out of my Ether 2s. It just wasn't exactly what I'm used to hearing out of the best solid state amplifiers. As you all know, I'm also a huge fan of lots of bass and tubes, so this is a little bit of a biased perspective. This is, and I can't emphasize this enough, a very, very detailed mid-range and treble presentation, and the bass is very tight. It's definitely a solid state kind of bass. It doesn't necessarily adhere itself to the signal in the way that a tube amplifier would do in that very organic tubey way. However, it definitely has uh, a real precision and tightness to it. I think people that are really bass heads will absolutely love this amp, and I really enjoy listening to it. Now, I've used the RME EQ on a lot of my units, and I find that this one is just as exceptional as the rest of them. RME in their manual states that they prefer to have equalization that covers broad ranges rather than equalizing every tiny little dip and peak. I tend to agree with this approach, as our ears tend to be quite good at filtering out really narrow Q or small level dips or peaks. There are some instances in which there are slight peaks that do need to be EQ'd out. In this case, again, Army has a great parametric EQ. I can't tell any difference personally between the EQ on my Fireface, my Babyface, or on the ADI2 DAC. It's very transparent sounding, and I really don't notice any drop in quality from using the filters. Moving on to the crossfeed. What do I think of the crossfeed on this? Well, I think it's actually better than the Fonitor 1D. I still find myself, if I'm using the crossfeed, only generally using the very lowest setting. Now, Army has very helpfully told us exactly what the crossfeed settings are in the manual, and you can do some more research on those curve types if you wanna see what they're doing exactly. I tend to find above the second or third settings that the unit seems to eat a lot of bass and it seems to sort of narrow the mix in a way that I don't find entirely pleasant. Now, if you like crossfeed, I would say this is one of the subtler and better implementations. I much prefer it to the iFi implementation and I actually prefer it, as I mentioned, to the Fonitor 1D implementation. Now, I think it's very close to, if not maybe slightly more transparent than the SPL full Fonitor matrix, um, but both of these would be in my top two or three crossfeed implementations. Again, I don't use the crossfeed an excessive amount, but if you really like the crossfeed, then this is something which will be very useful for you. I think overall, if you're looking for something at this price point, which is gonna be an all-in-one DAC amp combo, I don't know if you can do much better. This, to me, is actually a really interesting entry into the hi-fi market because it comes from a pro audio pedigree and a pro audio background. So they think about things less in terms of, oh, you're not allowed to EQ or you're not allowed to change the sound, you're not allowed to apply any sort of filtering to the sound. And the RME simply does away with all of that. And they even mention this in the manual. It's a little bit tongue in cheek, but they said, you know, why do we have the mantra of not equalizing? And the EQ in here is so transparent that it kind of, there's no point in not using it if it can help you get a sound that you like more. This certainly isn't a cheap unit, but I do feel that the DAC implementation and all of the features and functionality definitely make it worth the asking price. Now, if you're an IEM user, this might be all the headphone amp you ever need. If you're a headphone user and you own multiple pairs of higher end headphones, you might find that this falls a little bit short. Now that said, this has actually been one of my favorite units to review recently, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's really, really one of the best AKM DAC implementations that I've ever heard. Believe it or not, I've only actually covered a small degree of the functionality of the Army ADI-2, so if there's something that you have specific questions about, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to answer them.